I totally want to buy this gun. I really do. I absolutely love the Kimber K6. There I said it. I feel so much better. Maybe the best revolver we've tested in a long time. The K6. <laughs> it is impressive. And I'm surprised. So were all the crew members that shot the K6. Including Mrs. Nut and Fancy. She loved it. I can't believe Kimber got this one right. Right out the gate. There's your mini review right there. The K6 is excellent in most ways that count. It's not perfect. There are a couple quirks. Maybe I'll cover them here. But dudes, my likability scale on this gun is... Uh, I, can't, I can't say for sure, but it's leaning towards five stars. Leaning towards... I'm probably going to ding it a little bit for value because it's expensive. Thanks to Gunnies, the Great American Gun Store, for putting this one in my hands for a loan. And they have it for the amazingly low price of $7.99. There's a serial number of the reviewed gun. They have different variations of the Kimber K6. I really love this one. The satin stainless car is kind of polished in some places. Stainless steel, synthetic slate blue polymer grips very functional and they look good but they also have the DCR the deluxe carry rosewood gripped version you're looking at it on screen I really like that deep cover one it's black DLC coated tritium night sights black gray I believe G10 grips on that one the DC deep cover Maybe my favorite, though, in the Kimber lineup is a CDP, the Custom Defense Package, two-tone, Trit Sights, Rosewood Grips. Man, that is awesome. Second cool. That's really kind of, I think, when we talk about philosophy of use for this gun, of where it centers. Because it's not super light. It's 23 ounces, unloaded. Yeah, it has six rounds. We'll talk about that again. That's pretty good for a snubby. But that's still rounds limited compared to a lot of semi-automatic pistol options. For sure, would this be my first choice to carry? No. Let's be honest, it won't. Neither would this awesome, equally awesome, Model 36 J-Frame Snubby. This is Tactical Doodle's pistol. He carries this all the time. Bought it at a pawn shop and it is amazing. Came out of an estate sale. Some guy never shot it, carried it. Bless his heart, he passed on. And now it's in the hands of the Nut and Fancy clan. And <laughs> we're carrying this thing and using it. Aftermarket grips on it. It's wearing snap caps in it, in case you're wondering. So Doodle practices dry firing with it. Great gun. I love this 36. I need to review this. But uh, mini review. There's a mini embedded review. It's going to be the same likability scale. It really is. But when we're talking about this, I think if most guys are honest... It's about a second cool. We enjoy shooting it. We like it in our collection. Maybe we put it in a philosophy of use like in our, our, as a home defense gun. Although I, I don't think it's ideal. Why? What have I always said? A home defense gun needs a lot of rounds. Nothing fancy. Well, okay. I'll take a lot of rounds for sure. But what I officially say is a home defense gun needs a rail. So you can put a light on it. So you can identify the bad guy. So you don't do a bad shot. That's what I have always said. And this, of course, has no Picatinny rail. The Kemper K6. Two-inch barrel. So is it the best home defense gun? Mm. Uh, there's others that I would probably go with over it. How about as a ladies' gun? Well, the 23 ounces, to be honest, is every ounce you need it if you're firing anything like a plus P load or a 357 load. And I'm speaking from experience. Those super light scandium frame 357 Smith & Wesson has, dude, they will rock your world. And other makers that make them, I mean, they're great to carry, but when you do a full power 357 shot, I really doubt anyone's going to hit anything unless they have trained a lot with it. But also, are they going to be as, a, as durable as a full stainless steel framed gun like this one, the K6? Getting back to ladies' gun, and I had Mrs. Nut and Fancy shoot it. And she said it was, she, she didn't say, oh, this gun is awesome. It's so pleasant to shoot. She did not say that. She was like, well, it still, you know, kind of bites me a little bit. I can feel it. It's not great, but I sure will enjoy it more than shooting something like that. She said, that's a lighter gun, though. 
So weight can be a good thing. Ladies training gun, absolutely. Recreational gun, good dude, job. it was fun good shooting. Job. I say that about a lot of guns I bring to the table, and I know I do, but this gun is way, way fun. It's really an out of category, category performer, the Kimber K6. And I'm gonna start with this. We're gonna talk about features, and I'll go over that. Yes, I'm still wearing gloves. Because I'm wearing, uh, you know, rocking this stainless steel pistol. I'm trying to keep fingerprints off of it. All my moisture <laughs> off of it. Uh, how does it shoot? Well, for features, before I get to accuracy, I'm going to talk a little bit about the trigger. The trigger on the K6 is just impressive. And you've probably heard some things about it, and it's all true. It is a non-stacking, about a 6-pound, 7-pound pull with a very smooth, perfectly machined trigger face. It's really unlike any revolver trigger I've ever shot, the Kimber K6. And I think this is probably, for me, where the enthusiasm level starts. And then it also gets amped up when I get results like this. I'm going to raise the camera just a little bit. A little bit. So this is at 8 yards shooting full power plus P's out of a snub, snub nose. Now, as a reminder, as we go over these groupings, it... That's fairly difficult to shoot like that at 8 yards with most guns. You can see the loads I'm shooting. If you don't think so, I've always said go ahead and try it. I've had guys at the range do it. I've shown it on camera and their groupings are usually, you know, they're not horrible. But they're like that. But to do it with a snubby, that's pretty good. I mean, it's not, and I, I might be able to replicate it with a 36 or a Smith & Wesson 642, maybe. Mostly, and this is my group here, so that's my first shots on it, getting used to trigger. That's a normal group for someone that's shooting there. Excellent trigger and shootability, I said. Still kicks. Yeah, no joke. Still a small gun, even though it's uh, 23 ounces. 8 yards, 357. This is mixed loads. Mixed loads, great accuracy. Plus P Federal 124s. Plus P JHPs. Look, three rounds into one hole. Mixed loads here, so the groups open up. These might have been some reloads in here. Last target on the K6. 10 yards. There's Mrs. Nothing Fancy. Oh, she did pretty good. Check that out. You'll see her shooting the gun, too. And then this is standard, so she didn't do so great here. That's a big old group. Mrs. doing good. So I'm giving her some coaching, a little bit of practice. She hasn't shot revolvers very much, so it's a different way of shooting. The thing about shooting the K6, which is so excellent, is the trigger is its own creature. So you don't really have to worry about stacking. Like the wonderful 30, you know, Model 36, like I said, I absolutely love it. Highly recommend it. Or any other J-frame, they're all excellent. But the trigger is very stiff, and it takes a, it's going to stack and really hard right here, right harder, 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 and then it breaks. So that takes training, unless you go single action. And then it's a very consistent single action pull right here. Again, I got snap caps in this one, and I didn't fire on the empty cylinder. In case you're wondering, I wouldn't do that. Not with that firing pin right there. No way, dude. Got to take care of those old school firing pins. So this trigger takes practice, either dry fire or training. Single engine, uh, single, engine single uh, action, again, is its own animal. The K6 is super consistent. It's just a very smooth, consistent pull. We don't need snap caps in this one. Oh my gosh. So shootability, because it is so accurate, because it has such an amazing trigger, is uh, five stars. The shootability, the enjoyment level. So getting back to just a fun gun, how often have we said that on Tabletop, that we would own a snub nose just as a fun gun? You know, I love shooting the snub nose myself, but I know a lot of people don't. they like, oh, it's unenjoyable. The grip's too small. It bites. I get hammer bite. It kicks. I can't control it. You know, you can add aftermarket grips to help that situation out. You know, I like them all, but this one's super fun. How about size-wise? Let's compare it against a 36. I would have brought some other snub nose on the table, but TD has them. So we do have some other J-frames, like a, do we have a, I think we have a 638, if I'm remembering right. We've got an LCR. They're all in other states doing other duties. I'll leave it at that. So we're going to go into features review here, and this is the main selling point for a lot of dudes, and rightly so, is that the K6 at the top is about the same size 
Look at the width of the cylinder, and yet it holds an extra round. So this is a six shooter. This is a five shooter. And that that extra shot is a world of difference in the world of uh, you know small compact revolvers. Also, notice the sight radius is improved on the K6. So we're looking at 4.1 inches. And the Model 36 uh, pulling duty here just by way of representation, very small. Now you can make the case, well, these, you know, are last ditch guns. Uh, I get you, it, true. And I've given some stories on camera before of off duty officers using their J frames to stop uh, violent crime successfully, like that female officer in New York City years ago. True, I get you. But like I said, the K6, from what I've seen and from my shooting, is an out of category performer. It really, even though it has a two inch barrel, I feel like, and I was making hits on steel quite readily out to 50 yards. That's pretty incredible. And by the way, the point of impact with the sights is regulated perfectly, which I was glad to see. Because sometimes when we have fixed sights, if they're shooting off, for me, it just kind of lessens my enthusiasm. Albeit on the K6, it's a dovetail rear fixed sight in this variation and a pinned front sight, and they are interchangeable. So if you don't like the sights, if you do need to regulate them, you do have that option. Very cool. Remember the other versions like the CDP and the DC have the tritium sights. Now, let me just say this. We talked about the two inch barrel. Kimber, if you're listening, if you watch, I think if you make this in a four and six inch barreled version, you're gonna sell them. You're gonna sell them. And that would actually be my preference. So if you gave me a K6 in a four, four inch barrel, ideally five inch would be super cool because it's different, right? We don't see a lot of five inch revolvers. Dude, I would, I would really, really want to add that gun to my inventory just for collectability, second cool, and shooting enjoyment. Would it be my go-to, go-to-war pistol? No way. It's not a revolver, unless I'm in you know, a jurisdiction where revolvers are more legal than other guns you can have. That's another POU. So maybe a K6. You can't have a Glock, but you can have a K6. It has no detachable magazine. I get you. Look at the quality levels, too, of the Kimber. Very nice. We talked about the finish here. And the cylinder, again, is six rounds. There's your firepower discussion right here. You can see your ejector rod. I don't recollect any problems ejecting the casings. Uh, but then again, I don't remember if I was doing speed drills where I'm coming back out, you know, and really trying to get the 357 shell casings out. 357s are just a little bit longer. Sometimes they will hang up in some of the other guns we shot, like the Rugers. Like, like I believe the SP-101 4-inch barrel that I just reviewed this summer was that way we're getting hang-ups. I don't know of any speed loaders made for the K6 yet, but they're coming. Trust me. This gun will be successful. I don't think it's going to be discontinued. There's my prediction. Guys are going to buy it and enjoy it, and you're going to see an aftermarket spring up for the K6. Maybe some longer barrel versions. That's just my off-the-wall prediction. I was talking about the cylinder. Notice that there's no fluting in between the charging holes like there is in the classic Smith & Wessons. That's going to add more weight. That's where some of that 23 ounces comes along. But it also adds strength for a full power 357 load. And that's not something to be trifled with. So you can shoot 357s in this thing all day long, all year long, and it's it's designed to take it. I have not performed any long-term durability testing on it, though. Lockup on the K6 is excellent. I mean, you cannot even see any light between the cylinder and the chamber. Look. I mean, the light you're seeing right there is coming uh, from around, but that this, the tolerances are so tight on that sucker. The fitting on the K6 is superb, as is the cylinder release latch. So it's going to be a flat affair, easily pressed. It technically a cylinder release button. The tension on it is perfectly tuned too. And let's look at that classic Smith just to remember what they look like. So it's a push forward affair. I don't mind those at all either. Those are cool. But we got something different here. Different sometimes good. And I'm going to compare it against this Model 36, by the way. And you can see the injector rod in the K6 is longer than a J-frame snubby. That helps with getting those shell casings out. 
And unlike this version at least, and again, this is just one J-frame. There's all types of variations and barrel sizes, but a completely lugged and protected barrel <laughs> and ejector shroud right here. Left hand. So it looks good and it's also functional. Protects the ejector rod, gives you more weight forward, makes it stronger. And then the grips. I really like these. Like I said, the slate blue polymer, they're non-sticky rubber. They absorb some of the recoil. I really like this version. My favorite, like I said, is probably the CDP, and this is probably number two. Because uh, stainless steel with the slate blue grips, I just dig it. Uh, and then we get, of course, to would I buy it? Uh, well, of course I would. <laughs> I've been raving about it. The whole tabletop review. The Kimber K6 is a totally great gun. From Kimber and it's kind of nice to give them some unabashed positive press for a change I reviewed their Kimber micro 9 this summer and it did okay but I had some reliability issues and I have to bring those to tabletop this had none so it's accurate enjoyable totally reliable oh yeah and it's also expensive <laughs> that CDP retails for like twelve hundred dollars I showed you the price tag earlier is it worth $800? Well, let me tell you this. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to buy this gun. They will. And they'll love it. It's going to catch on. It's going to become popular. Other variations are coming. That is my official prediction here in TMP. And it's worthwhile because you have a company that put together a great design. And like I said, amazingly, got it right, right off the bat, the K6. I uh, forgot to tell you, there's your back strap there. It is somewhat exposed there. And it has a very well-fitted cover plate on the side for the lock work. Here, I didn't show you this side that much. So before we end, I'm going to give you a glance at that. Worth the price then? It's a lot of money. I ain't going to lie, dudes. You know, between this and getting a classic J-Frame Smith & Wesson for just a second cool thing, shoo, I don't know. I really can't answer that question. They're both amazing in their own rights. I think guys will just buy and own Kimber K6s for just the enjoyment, and they're smart to do so. I love the gun. Great job, Kimber. Ready? At your own pace, singles. Out. Your camera guy. It's running. God, this is a great revolver. Really nice. Boy, it's nice and smooth, isn't it? God, it's nice. It's freaking awesome. That front sight needs to be painted. Mm -hmm. Whoops. This is the best gun car makes. Our Kimber.
Nice. Which one? I bet you'd buy that gun, wouldn't you? I would buy this. I'm not a revolver guy, really, but this is a sweet gun. I would buy it. That is a freaking nice, nice revolver by Kimber. Yes. I love that thing. It's not too heavy either for full stainless steel. Not real heavy. Six rounds, not five. Yeah, show them that so they can see. Look at that. It's just a great gun. Boy, it feels good too. It's one of the it best revolvers to come out in a while. Yeah, it feels really good in hand. That rubber grip, it really bites down. It doesn't slide at all. It's, it gets a, you get a good purchase on it and it'll stay in place. How's the sights for you? Uh, <laughs> sights aren't that bad, but the front ramp does need to be painted. It, it, needs, it needs something to um, help it stand out against the black rear side as you can see. Yeah, it's just not any contrast there. That's yeah, easy to do though. Yeah, simple enough. Freaking, just use some of the fingernail polish that you have a lot of personally. You well, have yeah. a lot of fingernail I, polish. I wore orange on my toes. Yeah, I that's what I'm saying. Just use some of your toe polish. Perfect. Clear coat it, you're good. Perfect. Great gun. Nice gun. Good Love shooting. It.